Welcome to another episode of the Creative Leadership Podcast. My name is Arne van Oostrom and the Creative Leadership Podcast is brought to you by Blue Sky Republic. Blue Sky Republic, where the sun always shines, the sky is blue, and the possibilities are endless. And yes, this sounds like a tacky commercial. <laughs> All right, so moving on. I um, I'm I'm talking to uh, Sylvia Baronia on the show, and Sylvia is um, it's a very special lady. Um, she made a big impression on, on me when she attended one of my training programs uh, called uh, Radical Creative Thinking and Doing. And I always felt that we were never radical enough. We could have pushed her a lot further. And this interview kind of explained a lot to me because she grew up playing professional tennis. And that's a really tough tough world she was used to being challenged all the time and she kind of took that attitude with her in her today the work she does today so so it explained a lot to me and um, she grew up in this tough environment but then everything changed so that's a really fascinating story um it's about change it is about adapting so you know well, here we go enjoy i see myself like uh courageous explorer uh, if I think about my past and, and, and still the, the cheese and some actions they still do today doesn't matter private or business life um, courageous because I yeah I went for situations where it was totally new and I did not know where does it bring me it's just a feeling and go for it it's not just a tummy feeling, but it's just uh, I take a decision to 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 go for something that I know and change my life, change my job, you name it. And that's why I would say courageous um, explorer because um, I think since I in my life when I stopped to play professionally tennis, um, I needed to explore much more. Um, uh, the tennis was uh, was a huge part of my life for twelve years, um, but that was um, that was a part, you know, that was really focusing on just on that. As soon as I stopped to do that, for different reasons, um, then I, I, I exploded uh, as a person to to go for. I want to know more. I want to yeah. try more than that. You know. So okay, hold on, hold on. So. Yeah. Because I, I hear a lot of things that I'm, I'm really curious about. One, obviously, it's tennis, because I, I, I didn't know that by, about you. So but it's like, oh, really? Professional tennis? So I think a lot of people are like, did she just say she played professional tennis? Um, so that's interesting. Um, obviously, also, the, you know, the courageous and exploring and changing your life and following, following your, your, gut, your gut feeling or your tummy feeling. <laughs> uh, um, um, but uh, I'll just go back a little bit to to the to the to the tennis because when did you start playing tennis? I was six years old. You're six years old. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I was six years old. and nine years old, I started my first tournament. So really? Because really... six years old, I mean, you can't even. I mean, my my son. Was... <laughs> That's, the racket was bigger than me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So I was like, how can you swing swing a racket when you're six? Where did they come? Is that your parents? Did they did yeah. they play tennis? Yeah, my father. My father ah. was uh, uh, passionate about sport. Uh -huh. um, he tried hard with my brother, uh, but my brother was not the sportive uh, one as he expected. Uh -huh. Then after ten years, comes the the second one, me, and and he tried as soon as I could do something. He tried with me to make <laughs> yeah. sport, and mine was tennis in a way. Yeah. Oh, but it didn't really matter. Or it didn't matter which sport. It wasn't sp specifically tennis, or or it could um, be. It could have been anything. I mean, my father was coming from uh, soccer. He was right. um, playing soccer. Mm -hmm. Of course, soccer for a woman was not the the sport at the time. Sure. Yeah. And I think he just chose tennis. I don't know why uh, that was just coming. It, it was a. Uh, I mean, in that ambient, my father, after soccer, in a way, so that's why maybe he said, okay, let's give it a try in this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. And and so you were six years old, you, uh, you know, so you started getting tennis lessons, and then you said you were nine when you did your first tournament. 
Yeah, right? That's my son now. Early. I cannot imagine my son doing a tennis tournament. He's nine years now. I'll, I'll, so I'll, <laughs> I have to have a serious conversation with the, with the guy. Like, <laughs> you should have like tournaments. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> So, so nine years old, and then uh, because that's uh, three years of tennis lessons, and then uh, your your first tournament. Um, but w- was your father very? I mean, was it or w- were your parents very strict in, in you have to go to to tennis lessons? Is it or is it, what did you enjoy it? Was it something that you 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 know you're like yeah this is this I really mm-hmm. were you really good at it straight away or did you win um... your first tournament? I think at the beginning when you start so um, so small, it, it's it's a sport. It's a sport that you start to do it. Um, mm-hmm. and you don't really think about uh, that becomes something serious. But making tournaments it means also the, the the local you know challenges that you have there. The, the, the different clubs they they organize. And, and I was just put inside. I mean, I was so young that I I didn't really decide to do that. Mm. Uh, of course, was my father pushing in that direction because he wanted to see that there is something mm. that yeah. um, I, I assume, and and and, and I was yeah. good. I was good yeah. in a way. Uh, I was technically really good, I think. Um, and then when I was 14 years old, um, again there was this decision in the family to put me in this um, professional club for tennis player. And that changed my life completely because um, I was turning completely. So eight hours tennis and in the evening studying. So that was my day. All right. So, all right. So now, all right. So this, so your, your school went to the evening and the sport went to the day because it was basically, that was your life. Yeah. Wow. So eight hours of tennis uh, every day. Like, yeah, well, this is like with a break, maybe a break every now and then. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have, uh, you know, we go a bit uh, far in the past, but I have really good memories. Like, I was also having time that we changed the club place to near to the seaside to have different kind of trainings, also from athletics point of view. So I was mm. going six in the morning in the beach, I have a training, then start to play tennis in the evening, study. I mean... Um, mm. It was an amazing experience. It was pretty hard with the school because... The system was not aligned to have a kind of people that they have sport first and then school after. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, studying privately and then having every year uh, um, an exam that had to pass to be allowed in the school system to to, re- right. to be recognized. Right. I, I reached this and that. Yes. Right. 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 So that was, that that was hard, but 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 also, is it? Do you look back uh, at that with? with with a sort of a positive feeling or was it more like hard and uh, tough it's both, <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah well so, mean... <laughs> yeah, of course. so what what were the good parts what what was the thing that you you think back of and say oh that was that i really enjoyed um i think it was uh, this uh, chance to to express yourself com- completely focusing on something that you can see results uh, or not so mm-hmm. it's like um, continuously challenging yourself but also have the possibility to improve yourself uh, also to travel at the time because I was traveling a lot to make tournaments right. and it was it was a kind of life that um, I, I mean for me it was normal because I started so early that that was the kind of life that I knew and I enjoyed it and then I was uh, inspired by seeing myself uh, having progress in that um, mm. in that part of uh, of my life um, of course I um, and I think it's good I, I didn't I didn't miss other stuff because I didn't know it so having friends in, in, in this kind of sport where you play alone against the other right sure yeah. it's really really hard to make friendship for example not possible i mean even if you are so so young i mean maybe when you are 25 around 30 it's a different kind of mindset that you have also with other people is it because people are always also your rival yeah is that really so because yeah. although you're training together you're still like i need to beat you really? yeah. yeah all right it's always there it's always yeah, there yeah. and even with the trainer even with the trainer it's really hard to keep the trainer 
because in this kind of sport, um, you have to play and you have to win. If you're not mm -hmm. able to play because maybe you have a problem with the back, as it mm -hmm. happens, on, you're out, you're suddenly out. And right. that's really hard in that sport when you start. Right, yeah. Yeah, I see, I see that. It's um, so that must have had. So, are there things? And I'm gonna, so I'm making a big leap now because, but I'm I'm really curious about this because this is so impactful in your in your in your young life. And I'll go. I'll come back to it uh, because I want to know kind of what happened after and what the transition was. But also, but I'm curious to hear if you recognize sort of things now in your life now the way you kind of uh, you know the, the things you do now and the way you do things now that are you know connected to that experience so what it would do the, what you've experienced there you know it could be things like uh, you know the, the you know the focus on on and performing and uh, but also uh you know the 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 problems with friendships and you i mean when you're so young i mean did that kind of do you recognize things now did you say oh yeah that's because i you know, I, I learned that there or experienced that at, at that time. Um, yes, I think I do recognize some stuff. I, I, I must say I started to recognize really late, so, so a few years ago, uh, probably because I also needed to, to make peace with myself, with the period, because it was a really hard cut when I stopped. Let me explain you also later why. Um, mm -hmm. But what I recognize today, of course, it's uh, uh, endurance. And so I'm, I'm able to to set a goal for myself and, right. and go for it till right. the end, um, doesn't matter what. And I, I able to, to, to keep myself on track. And if I see something that is valuable for me or makes me to make a next step or next learning, um, there is nothing that is going to, to stop me, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, because of this, People, they tend also to say to me, ah, you're not a team player. I think it's not true. Um, I do love to play in a team because I missed it so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, I probably I have a louder voice in the team because um, I'm not afraid to, to say what I, what I think or to, to try out stuff. Um, I don't need permissions to do that. So is that, is, that, is that something you connect back to your tennis experience? Yeah. Because you yeah. were because you always had to fight for yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even yeah. if you have a trainer, you have to right. you have to pop up. You have to you have to make yourself better every day. The, yeah. There is no magic formula. You you really have to do it by yourself. Even if someone is supporting you, but it's up yeah. to you. Because you're being judged all the time, every time, every training, every game. It's always about if every you're not every ball that you touch. Exactly. Every ball that you touch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, That's, that sounds very heavy. Yeah, um, kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah, but is it so? That's. Are you very conscious about you know that period that that you still have that in your system? Are you conscious about that? Is that something you kind of connect to? Like, yeah, that's something I. Is that a feeling that you still can kind of sort of uh, sum up in a way? Like, like yes, I'm. I'm driven because I, 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 it's like being in the match or something, or, it's, or just like training for a match. Or uh, so, I, so keep the eye on the ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, also the, the 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 high competition that you have for such a long time is inside yeah. of you. And mm -hmm. I think I am competitive as a person. Uh, it could be positive and negative both sides. I mean, competitive means I. I, I I, you can count on me if you want to reach something because I'm not going to give up. But also competitive, it could be that I'm maybe too much pushing sometimes. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so. So. <laughs> so, okay, so now we go back to the, <laughs> to, to the tennis. And uh, because yeah. um, I, I, I'm really interested in, in kind of those, um, those connections because they but like you already said it, it's it's only been a few years ago that you started realizing sort of uh you know the the impact it had on you and you have to kind of uh you know uh somehow give that some a, a place in your life um but but when you so was it because you had an injury that you that because you said maybe your was it your back that you uh that you had were pushed out 
Yeah. 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 I so what what stop. happened? Um, I had to stop because I I had this in the wrist. Exactly the one that I was using to play with the racket. Um, so from from one day to the other one, I stopped. It was like uh, shocking. Um, and at the time, uh, they promised me they could come back to play. So mm. I had to make a surgery at the time. And uh, the, the, just to let you understand, I mean, for that surgery, I was training myself to get 10 kilos more because I knew that I would lose all these kilos of muscles. But I needed to be back in business after three months. Right. You know? Yeah. And we really was. You know, I want to come back, so I'm going to go back. Um, but then it never happened. <laughs> really? And it was a shocking process to to realize that that life is a way you you are not competing anymore there. You're not having any more to do with that. Um, so now what? And I was 18 years old. Um, from one side, it was really good because 18 years old, you can, um, there is the next uh, part of your life or stage of your life, this university. Exactly, yeah. And, and it was perfect at that point I was speaking to, to stop because then I could step in the next stage without so many problems, let's say. Yeah. But, but it was uh, hard to, to yeah. accept. Yeah, because you really wanted to go back. Yes, and that was the life that I knew. Uh, I mean, yeah. that was what I was. I was you. You were making uh, mentally also a certain kind of uh, projection of yourself. Uh, how do you see yourself? You need to do that if you want to. Yeah, exactly. To reach some some goals and then so on. So and that depression was uh, not anymore there. So I never thought about uh, Plan B. Right. No I tennis. I never thought about it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so like. Right, so okay. you because you're so you pictured yourself, your future. You know, it was always involving tennis. So there was always this. You were a player. It's sports. That's your. You know, you're going to be this athlete. That's what you're going to do. Right, and uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, that's really because that's ra really radical, obviously, and also in a in an age. Yes, it's it, it it's it's actually you know, in hindsight, I can imagine it is a good time because yes, you can kind of then build another life if it would have been five years later it might have been really more more difficult but at the same time you're also young still so you know it's you had this plan <laughs> and all of a sudden there's like there's a that's a very very radical cut right there like no different i, I don't think a lot of people will experience that because usually things go in sort of a flow and maybe it goes the wrong direction but it's not like you know. It's it's almost. Um, but it's because there 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 is an injury, um, um, and then everything changes. So that's a big uh, moment in, in in your life, in your your young life. So what happened? What happened there? Did you did you kind of do you know how how long did it take for you to kind of say oh well you know, for for instance you had to go to to to, to university. So did you know where where to go what happened um, yeah i mean at the time i remember also i also thought about okay what can i do um also to stay in the tennis uh, uh area and there were the only there was only one way that could be the one to become trainer uh, right. um, okay. i was evaluating that but honestly speaking at the time i was so eager to play but not to teach others that I did not saw myself in that uh, position. And then it came out some, I remember some sports club that they wanted to have me as an athlete, you know, uh, like uh, running the 400 meters or this stuff because I mean, legs were working well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but also there, I think I was too, um, how can I say, um, also to, um, I have it in German. Sometimes I, I mix the, the words. Um, stalls. Um, I didn't want it to too too proud. Uh, too proud, exactly. I was too proud to to say yes to another sport. I don't know. I, I, I was a tennis player at that point. So um, this is what I remember of myself at the time. Why I didn't go for that. Um, maybe five years later, I would say why you didn't do it. You know. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, then maybe it was also a way for myself to really, okay, that's the cut and I want to close the chapter. And right. I, I, I start a new chapter, that's it. Um, and then I started to think about, okay, what I want to study. Um, and because of my problem in the hand, even if that I, I tried it to go inside the physiotherapy to study mm. physiotherapy, mm. I had two two things: physiotherapy or marketing. That I mean, like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Where did marketing come from? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't remember. But that was the two choices that I did really? at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and because you had to make tests, you no know, exams to to go inside, I said, okay, the ones that win will win. Let's say so a bit more. All right. Let's so the destiny, what brings yeah. to me, and then uh, one marketing. Right. <laughs> you don't remember where that the interest in marketing came from? I don't know if I think it was about uh, uh, also in the the city where I was living. I was checking, of course, uh, um, what was the possibility. Right. Um, and marketing communication was something a bit more in the creative direction that maybe I, I was looking for. So something more creative, not that uh, too high level or too, too focus on, on, on specific topics, but I wanted to open up a bit and that I, I thought about that's it. Because the other focus physiotherapy thing was coming also from, from my experience buying, having physiotherapists yeah, uh, yeah. during my tennis life that they were helping me a lot. So, oh, okay, so so what you're saying is that you had either you had a choice of something that was very also a little bit part of the world you came from, but also very focused, mm -hmm. or something that was really broad and wide and could go anywhere, yeah. right? So uh, th that's an interesting choice, like you know, also because it's more like you know whoever wins, <laughs> it's like you know, I'll I'll try both and let's see who chooses me and like okay let's go marketing, <laughs> you're like. <okay. laughs> That's interesting. So, because that is very different because then all of a sudden that's not, I mean, that's like very general, like marketing can be, you know, yeah. especially now, you say, like, what is marketing? I mean, what is the thing? So what is your, um, so what is next? So you went, so you went to, to school yeah. and, and, and so what happened to you? Did you like immediately thought, yeah, this is great or, or did it take some time to get used to this? Because you were also not used to going to school that way, right? Because you were always, te you know, you were at school at night <laughs> and, and you were doing sports during the day or. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I, I enjoyed a lot the university time, I have to say, because it's a, it's a different time of making school because you are more um, self-paced. You know that you have to do your exams, you have to do learn uh, your stuff you have to prepare yourself so it's mean i like it a lot it was enough uh, freedom in that space of uh, studying at the university that i enjoyed at that time um i also felt yes the the topics were a bit too bright at the point like i said okay what will happen after i always said this i think um mentally these steps like okay what's next um, because um, mm -hmm. maybe I was always happy to reach next things to do, you know. And I yeah. think the, the, the exploring phase started at that point. And, and I wanted to have something a bit more practical at the point. And also I was studying the beside us uh, graphic design, um, just because I wanted to match marketing topics with something a bit more hands-on also. So I, I, on the side, so next to marketing, you started studying graphic design at a school also, official educational program at the same school yeah, or a different school? Or? No, no, it was not a university program. It was um, like a school of, I think it was the six months ah, okay. uh, that you okay. could uh, do beside. Yes. Yeah, and because it, yeah. because you were so used to being so focused or so hard work you could just do another program next to your university <laughs> exactly yeah because you know i was also working in the summer yeah yeah sure <laughs> yeah of course you were yeah i can see i understand yeah i, I see that <laughs> it was totally normal you know <laughs> yeah of course because you're yeah you've always been working really hard so it's, you had too much freedom you had to fill it in with 
stuff yeah. to do like other yes. <laughs> so so how, how so the, but that's really cool i mean that's a great combination now i mean i mean maybe then as well i don't know anymore i can't remember what what, what the kind of the state is quo was at the time but now that's a that's a really cool okay understanding visualizations and understanding the sort of the practical side of design and also sort of the marketing combined I mean that's uh, that's 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 really cool. So so you were so you were going through this and you like school because it gave you enough freedom and also you were interested in in doing other things on the side. You thought you wanted to mix graphic design and 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 marketing. Why did you think that was a good idea? First of all, what what was what is your what what drove you to think that? Because you came because is I mean is there a do you have like a um, is there other people around you that are in graphic design or where were you exposed to kind of that side of design? Do you know? Um, I think in part become, become something clear to me that I wanted to have something um, more practical to use or to, to give a kind of outcome at a point. I was also interested in everything that was around creativity for me at the time what whatever it means for me creativity why why, time, but why was that because it... i think um it's really probably to my brother because my brother at the time um he was uh, studying and doing um theater so as an actor ah. um the one who does it... not like sports he was really yeah. the lazy brother <laughs> It's not today. It's not lazy at all. No, no, but at kidding. the time, <laughs> at right. the time, it was interested in theater. Yes. Right. So okay. So he was. He, um, he started doing theater, and that kind of. What did that do for you? I don't know. I think it opened up to me um, topics and and ways to do things that I um, that I didn't know. I mean, theater is so is so personal. It's so. It's a t it is really about creativity, improvisation, even mm. if you have uh, something to follow, but, um, and it's so emotional. Um, right. And I, and I remember the passion that he had in that topic. And, it's and like I, tennis. Yeah, I mean, he tried hard for a long time, but it was really, really hard business and really mm -hmm. hard market to pop up and make it um, a job. Um, mm. And then I, I understood, so, okay, I want to find my passion too again. So what's what's my next passion? And, and I felt, okay, what is creativity? Uh, graphic design, I liked it a lot. Um, I think I've always been interested in art generally, right. um, something that I always followed. And okay, and I, I tried in my way to get near to that topic in a way. When did you... So when you graduated, did you have like a uh, specialization that you started focusing on uh, on uh, within the whole marketing kind of uh, bandwidth? Uh, what was there a focus that you were uh, choosing? Um, well, at the time there was this uh, bachelor program of three years, and then mm -hmm. it was up to you if you want to go on with like two years of master, mm -hmm. the film of specialization that you are talking about. Yeah. And I remember I was pretty sure that I did not want to make a master. Okay. I wanted to go to work. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. As soon yeah. as possible. <laughs> oh really? Why? Because I I don't know. I was it was clear for me that I wanted to be independent. And ah. and I did not want to let's say waste too many years into studying, but I want to step into this world of work what that it means and how it does look like and how can I, again, reach, okay, a progress in that world. Mm. Um, because I, I said, okay, checkpoint, I have my bachelor, I'm happy with that. I don't need to go on with that. I want to, to go for the next. Okay. And, yeah. and what was next? What happened? Oh, the next, <laughs> that was, uh, was a roller coaster, the next. <laughs> All right. All right, go, oh, let's, next, uh... let's go, go, go. <laughs> Um, you know, I started these these jobs like marketing departments, naming agencies, and so on. I think at the the first period of uh, my yeah job life, I I change uh, job every six months, every six months because every six I'm months, not yeah. happy with that um, because for me it was too less. I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to learn more. 
I want also to earn more. So it was like pushing, pushing in a, in a direction, you know, until I, I, I joined this German company that had this marketing department in Italy. And that was my longest time ever in a company, four years. Um, and then I saw myself, okay, now you stay calm, Sylvia. You stay for a period of time and, and, and learn the job and stay here and, and see what happens. So that, that I did, so that was okay. But I, I experiment jobs between really doing graphic design to making social media at the time was really few things or newslettering this stuff or yeah. even um, projects for uh, like making interior design for exhibitions or museums yeah. um, that I liked it a lot it was really really creative but I didn't felt okay it's, it's not it's not a position that will bring me to a kind of next level so I need to go inside a bigger company that's why I went to this German company had also an office in Italy. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that period where you were kind of uh, working in, in agencies and departments and you you kind of uh, were, you know, um, and you, was it sort of, I mean, is it, is it, was it, I mean, it sounds very restless. It sounds very like, ah, this is not, this is not enough. It's more, I should need more. <laughs> but um, in a way, was it uh how do you see that now is it is that was it just also a learning like a uh, sort of a way to start understanding where you would fit or and and because i mean i i i do res i mean it resonates with me in the sense that uh you know you you're looking for something but you don't know what you're looking for and so you're going to have to kind of try especially if you haven't i mean th these are your first jobs so you don't know I mean, you don't know right so you go work for an agency you have no clue from from the outside you can think oh this looks really cool really nice but in the inside it's usually totally different with every company by the way so you have to kind of learn what it is like to work and to to do a job and to and then obviously get the opportunities and the sense that you can grow and et cetera, et cetera. But so how did you, I mean, was it a restless period or what, were you really conscious of uh, uh, like um, what you're looking for or, or, did, did, or you just didn't know what you were looking for or what was it? Why were you kind of, why were you moving all the time? I know that it wasn't enough, but what, did you know what would be enough? Like more money? Yes, sure. But other things? Um, sure. Um, of course, it was a, a learning process to to see where I can see myself in a in a job environment or in a job topic. What to do exactly? I think it was also a research from my side, um, uh, which is the team that I like to work with. Um, okay. Because uh, from the from team, you mean I the also, people? Yeah, mm -hmm. the yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From tennis, I learned. I mean, it was me. I think mm -hmm. it was me and my trainer, that's it. Um, but of course, in the job environment, it was a much more higher bunch of people together. And so, and my question, okay, where I do feel myself uh, comfortable, also appreciated, and where I can bring also knowledge uh, or myself there, and so on. So I think it was also research to finding an environment where I could get inspired and it could also mm -hmm. inspire others so that there was a research of course and also balancing balancing of course that the compromising between you do have to make tasks during the day but also you can also maybe create something along the way so mm -hmm. but yeah. you uh but you when when we started the conversation you you talked about you know being courageous and an explorer and uh, and you, you know you know following your sort of your gut feeling is that also where that that happened or you like uh, you know because you were because i mean specifically when you're when you are starting your career and getting uh, doing jobs of quitting i mean is that where you felt like okay i you know i'm i know i'm i want to do something else and i move move on and and is that where you feel that you needed to be courageous um, to do so? Um, yes, I think uh, at the time, also all this, the Jesus was also discussed in a way in the family. So 
Um, my brother and my, uh, so my, my father and my mother were not always happy that they changed, probably so often at the beginning. But in a way, it worked out because I was never without a job. That was really important for them. Um, so mm. I managed to compromise what they were expecting from me and from the other side. Sure. Uh, but your father, my, my feelings. Your father must have been actually, yeah, that's also interesting because your father obviously must have been very sad that your tennis career didn't didn't happen as because he he was almost there <laughs> with with one of his children. You almost was it was that a big thing for him too? Yeah. 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 It takes <laughs> took took a lot of years to make peace <laughs> between us, I think. Oh really? Um, because 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 he did he blame you for that? I mean, he invested a lot. Sure. In that, in, in different ways. Um, okay. And was um, it was difficult um, at the time to? Hmm. Yeah, I think he, he for him was uh, also chapter close, but was um, he was not ready for that. Um, for me, because I was really in the middle, I was maybe it was easier to to say, okay, it, it's gone, yeah. it's gone, and I need to go next. Yeah. And I feel well, your him, your wrists just didn't work anymore. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, sure. I, I had it every day, so for me it was yeah. clear. Yeah. Uh, exactly. For for him, it took a while before to I think to accept it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about your mother? I don't know. I think my mother was. <laughs> At the time was like um, so. My father was deciding, and she could. She was not uh, playing much against it. Even if um, today I would love that she would do it. So to hear more her voice in that decisions, um, because also as my brother says, um, I, we we got took away from each other. So, mm. um, I mean, we have 10 years between me and my brother. Yeah. And, and that time of our life could be really, di really, really different if the decision would be made in another way. Mm -hmm. And and the funny, funny or sad things is I stopped to play tennis. I came back home and my brother went to live in Milan. So, like, we, we didn't cross each other, really. And, that, and to think about it now, it's uh, sad, of course. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Right. Yeah, of course, because you were away uh, playing tennis and being uh, doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 10 years is exactly that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is which is a uh, which is something you can't change. So it's, you know, but I can, uh, yeah, I can imagine that you could kind of imagine a scenario where it would have been different, but then you don't know. Right. So that's it's also I mean, things happen. Um, I, I, I re it resonates a little bit with me because my so my, my children they're not the difference not, it's, it's six years uh, and they do I mean so they because they are lazy and they they don't do any you know professional sports or anything you know my daughter's uh, fourteen now mm -hmm. and my uh, and um, uh, my son's eight and uh, so but but this idea of that you know where they're always saying saying things like uh, oh. In five years' time, so my daughter, because she's 14, she says, well, for five years' time, I'm going to move out. I'm going to be somewhere else. And I'm, and so my son would be then the only kid at home. And uh, and there's a, this, it's interesting. This is for me also as a parent. It's like, oh, you know, you know, they're not really, they're growing up together, but also not because they're in totally different stages in life. They're living together. But even although they live together, my daughter has a completely different kind of interest in life. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, she's a teenager, you know, everything's totally different. My, my son is still, you know, he's still a kid. And, uh, and so their interests are also not aligning. So even though they live together in the same home, uh, it's not, they're not aligned at all. And, and, and also their, their rhythm of life is totally different. So I think also, I, I really hope that, so even though they live together in the same home, I really hope that later in life, they will actually, you know, build a, 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 a sort of a, a relationship based on friendship. And, and, and because that's not always, even though, even if you live together, in the same, it doesn't always happen because you're somewhere also a bit of rivals in a way, because they're always like, you know, why can't he, when I was his age, I was not allowed to do that. 
Why? Why? Oh, it's just because I'm a girl, right? So when it, when I would have, you know, you know, he's going to be able. Blah, 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 blah. So like, and we're like, no, it's I don't know. <laughs> um, and I so so I have a, my sister's only three years older than I am, and I actually um, have. I don't really have a very strong relationship with her, which is actually also very sad. So it's so I mean, I'm just saying that. <laughs> there's hope <laughs> yeah absolutely relationships starts also after <laughs> sorry it just that kind of because it yeah it connects to uh, something that we experience here as well a little bit totally different than, than your your uh, family obviously but still somewhere somewhere related so how so your so your brother is in uh was in theater but because I, I kind of I, you didn't say it directly but it but it sounded like he didn't really make it in theater or di- or is he still trying or is he uh, is he doing something else now no we tried for a period of time for some years and mm. he was also making some uh, tours with uh, some uh, shows that like mm. tours could be three or six months and then then stops and then the question is what's next um so it was uh, he enjoyed a lot the time, and I remember I um, also enjoyed to to watch him and go there. But also remember that there was the problem, okay, because at the time he was, I think, uh, 24, 25, I remember. Um, so also from from my parents, the the, the pressure was of questioning, okay, this is your life. You need to get a job that is stable. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, this pushing him at yeah, a point, yeah. I think he left and he went for for another job, for another life, because it was not possible to have this constant yeah. uh, during the year, let's say. Okay. What's he doing now? Yeah. Now he's a sales uh, marketing manager oh. for a fashion brand. Marketing, know, okay. <laughs> All yeah, right. I mean, it's it's you can do a lot of studies, the science, marketing, trainings, and new customers. So it's like really okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of theater there too. So. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good, really good. Yeah, it's really I, good in connecting with people, honestly speaking. Exactly. Well, I think. Well, I mean, yeah, I think theater. I mean, I have a background in 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 in, uh, in theater. Uh, mainly comedy, but uh, being uh, able to be on stage and 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 uh, connect to people um, and present yourself and and kind of the, that whole that's a re- I, you know if, if I would you know if I could have it my way I would teach every kid you know uh, a theater lessons every mm-hmm. kid should be going should go to theater class mm-hmm. and 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 the rest of the life for for as far as I care. Because I think that's such a uh, amazing, wonderful skill to have, and it gives you so much uh, confidence. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then um, okay, so we're we're still at. Uh, I was we were you know you were in this messy period. At least it feels a little messy period of go but jobs, 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 and uh, no, 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 this is not it. But I, I want more. I want different things, bigger, better, more money, <laughs> more interesting things to do. Um, uh, and, and also because, you know, you are, you know, clearly you're someone who, you know, you're, you have, you have a focus and you can really push yourself. Um, and then, and, and now obviously there, there are parents who say, you need to have a job, <laughs> come on, stable, stable job. You need to have a job. And it, and it does. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm a parent. I'm thinking, what am I, hey, what, what are you doing? What, what am I doing? <laughs> Hmm. You're saying I, the same? No, not at all. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, so I'm like the really opposite. I'm like, ah, I'm a school dropout. Okay. Listen, I have this like I'm a school dropout. I just, I just, I'm like that middle part of your life where you say, I just we did all those jobs and try. That's basically my life. It's like all my. That's everything I've ever done. Like just searching, 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 searching. No, not that. No, that that that. that. Very restless, by the way. Not something you might want to do the most of your life. But it's also part of, I don't. So maybe that's what I'm looking at because there's also part of that which is exciting. And so then you went to this more, uh, you know, the, the the German company that had, had the office in, in in Italy, where you said, okay, hold on, now go and you know you have to stop yourself. And I'm gonna want to, I want to know this job. You know, you have to stop and 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 focus on this. That's that's awesome because that's something I've 
I don't think I've ever been able to do <laughs> like stop focus on this but it also sounds a bit like you had to kind of uh you know not literally you said you have to stop yourself and uh, was that so what was it first of all the j- j- job that the task that you were you had to do what was the thing you had to learn and what did you learn um so in that in that part i was doing everything around also making layouts for packagings or for right. displays of the products because that was a company making products for pets, uh, cats, dogs, you name it. So it was, it was really fun, the product itself. Yeah. Um, so had a lot to do with uh, managing everything, designing yeah, packaging, but also um, trade fairs for them. Right. So, uh, so are I, you were, were you art director? Is that, is that Was that sort of the... No, I never got named hard. No, no, no time. Well, it sounds no, like an artist. I was, I was marketing manager, Max. Ah, oh, okay, then. okay. Well, That's it sounds it. like, oh, you're the marketing manager, and but yeah, you're actually well, you're pretending to be an art director. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- that was so creative and so yeah. so fun to yeah. have to do with that kind of problem. I must say also the people in the team uh, are still friends today. Um, I, I had so much fun. Um, I have to okay, say. so but that helped because you you know one of the things you said was also you know you were looking for people to work with so 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 you not only did you say oh stop I need to but I need to learn this job but also there were the right people around you so yeah. so it yeah. was fun and, and right okay exactly yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know and also they were fun but also they were the, the right uh, companion or fellows you name it because. Um, we were also making so many stupid things like videos with each other because it was uh, also one of my colleagues was connected to theater as well. He was making mm-hmm. prof, improvisation, and right. we were making so much fun in the office as soon as we could with the product. So I remember that pretty well. Um, and the funny thing is after four years, um, it also I also chose to change because uh, that people also decided to go away. Right. Actually, we decided to go away almost in the same day. <laughs> same if day. I, if oh I remember well, if I remember well, we did the the, the announcement all together. I don't remember. Really? <laughs> so the whole team said, "Well, we're, we're <laughs> we we're leaving. Wow. <laughs> we go." <laughs> Really, that's that must have been a shock to 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 whoever was your boss. No, we wanted to shock a bit the boss, ah, to okay. shake it a bit because we were not uh, aligned in everything. But yeah, ah. well, that worked. Yeah, probably. Yes. <laughs> wow, that must have been. But but because you weren't happy or the team, there you felt there was no alignment. There was no. Um, it could have you know things could have been better, and and it just didn't work out. Um, you know that the, the company was um, owned or, or, or managed by the family, so the brother and the sister, and they were really, really different from each other, mm. and also from a leadership style. And cats and dogs. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> so it was it was difficult to to also see a kind of development on certain strategy topics and so on. So mm. we. We wanted to to maybe propose those ideas. There was a less less space going on in the years right. for for building something new or try something new. So it was becoming more and more like stuck in their way to make the business instead of mm. developing what's the next steps of, uh, to stay in the market relevant and so on. Right. And yeah, as soon as, honestly speaking, as soon as I feel I cannot learn something new anymore, then 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 it's yeah. for me the, the sign. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You're not you're not growing, you're yeah. not getting any better. You, know, you need to kind of yeah. And no, nothing new is also okay. So all right. So you you left uh, um, with the whole team. <laughs> Like goodbye, uh, you left, and then and did did you did you already uh, uh, you know know where where you would go next, or was it very spontaneous, or or was it more like did you already kind of find another another job, or did you know where to go? Well, um, at the time, also uh, from the private side, was uh, also um, pretty changing a lot for me. 
And at the time I got to know my actual husband that is German. Mm. And I matched the way to I, I leave my job and I also leave my country. And oh, right, that's when you left uh, to Germany. I, I, I moved to Germany. Mm. I mean, he wanted to, to move to Italy. <laughs> But I said no. I come to Germany. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why? Why was that? I don't know. It was uh, for, for me. It was really a, a, a strong will to to change, to to go for something really, really new, mm. something that I don't know. Um, and from the other side, I think for him it would be really, really difficult to adapt to the uh, Italian culture style to work without the language um, yeah, yeah, right. i mean he, he got to know the italian life by having a job in germany it was right. perfect match yeah. but if you change completely to the italian side and i think it would be really, really difficult and he said okay i raise the hand i come to germany let's do that um it's interesting I, uh, 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 in a way that it's easier for an Italian person to adapt to the German style of things than it is for a German person to adapt to the Italian way of doing things. That's funny. Just an interesting, think... interesting thought. Because he could have said, you can never. Sylvia, there's no way you can adapt to a German way of thinking or, or doing. But you were like, no, that's could easy. Be, could be also true, but... <laughs> It probably, probably, but yeah, maybe the Germans won't tell you. Then maybe that's the only thing. But the Italians will tell you. Probably, exactly. <laughs> yeah. it's more in your face, like you know, you know, that's not how we do things. No, True. I think also at the time I was the one with more need to to yeah, go for yeah, something yeah. new. So I was yeah. not happy with the job. So I wanted yeah. to. So in between the two, I was much more motivated. I think. Yeah. To, Funny, really. If you if you if you think about the, sort of the sort of the, the the rhythm or the pattern in your life, you went from someone who was very focused and very on an, on a, something very specific, and that was all everything, 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 everything. And then you were forced to change, which was dramatic and difficult. But after that, you started looking for these changes. To me, so it's in a way, it's like, but that was a show. You could also could have been someone who said well i really now i get to so i i i had this shock moment where i had to change everything i i i get something new and i stick to this because i don't want to experience that again but in a way you went from someone who was very focused on just one thing to someone who's very hungry for new things and so it became uh, it became a very positive thing in your life really uh, the big changes uh, because now he's like, oh, I need something new. I I moved to Germany, which is it's not always. My, you live in Berlin, right? Did you move to Berlin uh, st straight away? Was that the first? Where did you move to? Because that, that's an interesting. Because uh, Germany is not Germany. I mean, there's a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of differences in the you know the regions and the cities. I moved five times in Germany. Okay, what was the first? Uh, <laughs> first city you lived. so the first city was um uh, where my husband was living that was near Koblenz mm -hmm. um but the deal was because I was moving without knowing the language so and without having a job and so on and then the the the, the deal between us is okay let's give us a bit of time but as soon as we can we move to the next step whatever it is but we don't stay there so sure. um and so we did so I I made this uh intensive course of German for six months and I mean it was, was really hard for me also to accept myself to not to have a job a fixed job and have a kind of okay so now what mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean it took a while so after eight months I got my first job in Germany it was then in another city in Bayern mm -hmm. and, and we went for that um, I mean also him was pretty um, Amazing to be so flexible, you know, so with me, um, you yeah. know, supporting this kind of uh, changes as well. And and I, I must say, because I was never expecting to, you know, to, to start at a level, at a certain level in Germany. I just wanted to to see, okay, well, how does it work there? I want to step in, into this uh, market, how 
and, and just start. And in fact, I just started like a, um, like in a stage, <laughs> the first job, even if I had already, I don't know, 10 years of experience in work, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like someone goes out from the university and starts to work, you know, with that kind of um, position. And it was fun because I started the way. For me, it was totally fine. It just I was happy to to step inside the, the system and... And after three months, they give me a, a normal contract. So right. it was really nice. I mean, it was really cool. nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so and then you went, You were in Bayern? I was in Bayern. Uh, which is interesting. Um, uh, <laughs> for an Italian, because I mean, that's like the opposite of Italians, I think, somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah like, it's, um... I mean, Germany is like Italy, you know, from the north to the south, it's changed a lot. Sure, yeah, of course. A lot. Yeah. So, uh, uh, this is, I mean, I I experienced Bayern, I, I went to the, more to the north, and now in Berlin. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. And Berlin for me, it's a second home, finally. Yeah. I really feel home here. I have two homes here yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. But at the time when I went to that uh, job, there was again in the marketing field. Mm-hmm. I was a big corporate, so I was starting my, I really from Italy, so from that company, um, was a really a corporate, so I, and, and then started my, my past in high corporate, let's say, um, and I was in the marketing department, and then I felt, I, I remember that I felt in, in my desk by doing marketing stuff, whatever it is, um, uh, stuff for sales, uh, website, you name it, and I felt, oh my God. I think, I think this job is going to be taken from um, artificial intelligence one day. I don't know. I, I don't feel like that, I, mm-hmm. that my contribution is going to be better than a computer one day. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, what? So what's next? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I wanted to, to, to bring myself away from that desk. So stepping out from marketing in a way. Mm-hmm. Not that, and also in a way, I felt that the marketing department sometimes like it takes longer to 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 innovate. Um, when the products the development it's uh, always pushing forward, the marketing departments like yeah, they follow, but they were never right. driving the company. You know, mm-hmm. uh, okay, so okay, I want to step out from this desk, and then I went for. I call it the last sprint of my life of really studying again. And I studied this uh, digital transformation in Nuremberg in Germany. Mm-hmm. It was like one year and a half only in the weekend. So I could work and start in the weekend. And it was my my bet, my bet to make myself possible to or able to to change the topic and then the job role, let's say. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, what I, what happened after? Because you because now you part of uh, at least in your, it, it also in your job title it also says that you're doing service design. So where did that happen? <laughs> so you were digital transformation, and I, I you know obviously there's all these I see the connections, but so so where did that kind of uh, language happen in that kind of direction what what happened there mm-hmm. um by studying then by doing this um, um course uh, there was one of the topics was uh, design thinking um mm-hmm. and then i i felt in love with that topic and i wanted to deep dive and then i went to amsterdam to make is that, uh, oh is that yeah. where we when we met ah, yeah i think it was 2017 when i did that with mark and right yeah yeah oh really oh. yeah the, the one week uh training let's say crash course <laughs> to deep dive on it and uh, for me it was like okay and uh, now i understood like 50 by 50 percent it's enough i go for it and i was checking for my next step to, to say okay i want to apply what i learned how can i do that um and i also wanted to as I said, to, to step up from marketing, and and I got inside uh, Kuka Kuka Robotics, and, and and that time they were building up this new accelerator team for right. innovation, for new product services, and and design thinking or self design was needed 
because you need to give guidelines to where to start, why we choose to do this and that first. So that was my like cold shower mm-hmm. to start to do that job in a new environment. Yeah. yeah. And so that's an inter- it was an interesting uh, journey uh, from starting from tennis, <laughs> but but it is still the drive that you have and uh, and and you sort of somehow also always trying to kind of improve yourself and and look at then how how to develop and new things and 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 not being afraid to switch, so not you know not being afraid to say well. Ah, you know, uh, marketing, I need to do something else. Uh, let's go and let's check something else out. And then you went from from marketing, you went, came to this uh, digital transformation topic, but that then, you know, leaped into design thinking and service design. And so, so if you, if you look at that, so where, where are you now? What is your, uh, what is your feeling now? What are you doing now at this moment? Um, I think I feel that I'm a change maker today. Change maker, yeah. <laughs> Where I am, yes. Yeah. And because I, I, I still keep with me this uh, curiosity and, and way to not be afraid to, not to change, but to try things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, I, I landed in amazing, huge corporate where there is a lot of space if you like to do stuff and try out stuff. Mm-hmm. And and it's amazing to find out also um, your your network in, inside the the system and and try out things. I mean, um, um, this spirit in a way of uh, courageously taking decisions or actions. I do that, and and I think that the biggest uh, maybe um, outcome of that was like last year, um, and I started this uh, global community inside. The company and it was really like I, I started, and then let's see what it brings. And today yeah. it's, a, it's a huge um, community that before was not existing. So it's like, yeah, and and that happens. I think every time that I have the possibility to do, or I see mm-hmm. um, the way or or the space to do that. Um, before I never, I think I never had really space to do that. And today I'm really happy to to have that and make changes inside where I am, not not just for me, but for others too. Yeah. And and uh, do you know so where you're going to go next? Is there a next already, or is it uh, this is uh, this is the thing I'm going to focus on? No, there is not a next. The next is really uh, for me focusing now on. How, how the best I can bring a positive impact to where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, could be to the colleagues next to me, could be to to the client that I'm working with, or could be to the community that I'm building on. So that's, that's strongly focusing on me. And and I don't I don't do that alone. I'm I'm really I'm really happy also about that. So I really mm-hmm. have uh, people and colleagues that uh, join me along this journey. Right. Uh, just because they want, and I think it's, um, yeah, it's really powerful. And is that so? If you if you think about sort of what the most important things are that make all this happen for you uh, right now, so that you can kind of create that com- this global community uh, and do the things that you uh, that you that you love to do, but also be successful and feel that you're kind of growing. Is, uh, what is so? There's I think I, what I hear. The people around you that is that the most important thing or is it also it's, um, more? It, it's part of the it's part of the game um but still everything that is uh um, is there or i reached out is um um it's also there because i don't have so much fear mm-hmm. um you know, of course, when you're inside the big corporate, it's like the, there is rules, uh, it's a system set, right. and, mm-hmm. and and it's there. Um, I have less fear to, to really fit completely to the system. Mm-hmm. And in a way, I try always to, to push a bit forward some some um, some frames that, they, that you are in. Mm-hmm. And, and I like to challenge the frames where we are. Um, brings... Uh, thinkings and, and things forward in a way right so and to make you feel 
um, happy where you are and make you kind of successful in what you're doing, the organization should allow you that space, right? So you so the space that you can challenge the frameworks and the systems. Yeah, it's uh, it's that, and also the team where I am, so the department in particular where I am. I think it's uh, cool that um, I'm still free in a way. So the, ten the tendency is to, to put you inside a um, uh, a topic, or that that's what you have, that are your skills, and that's it. But I'm not in that quadrant. I don't know, um, and I like to 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 check out different topics and projects and so on. And, and the teams allows also not to be only the service designer or to be only the organization designer and so on. So um, that, that's, that's really nice. It continuously gives you the possibility to learn to, if you want to challenge yourself, it's not a must, but if you like, go for it. Mm. And yeah, it's a freedom that is not easy to find. Um, exactly. In organizations. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you have found a, a really very um, good spot, but also something that fits well with you, where you can be both, uh, you know, you can both challenge the existing system, uh, but you can, you know, you can have, you can use your sort of your courageousness, so your, 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 you know, you're not afraid to, uh, to challenge. Um, and, and I think you need that too. I think you also need need that tension, right? So it's uh, because without that tension, it's going to be probably going to be boring yeah. for you, right? So I think it's also something you want. You want to be able to challenge, and because that will challenge you as well. Um, which I, in my mind, it link, uh, links back to your tennis because that's the you know you need that's your driver. You're going to be tested all the time. If you're not going to be tested and not be challenged. Uh, I think that's when the, the organization loses you, uh, probably. So it mm -hmm. sounds like you found a really good spot. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I thank you very much for this uh, conversation. I, I really enjoyed it. And um, it's a really it's a beautiful story. So thank you for sharing. Thanks a lot for the invitation. I, I really enjoyed this as well. <laughs> <laughs>